you've heard me talking about uh I, I, this dope book I had the pleasure of reading recently. It is called Wounded Survivor, a personal memoir on surviving loss of loved ones, sexual abuse, and illnesses, mental and physical. All right. We're going to be chopping it up with Janelle Reynolds. She is the author of this book. And um, I got my copy. I know a couple of you guys said you got your copy. Who didn't get their copies yet? You need to go get it, right? Um, one of the things I dig about this book, whenever it comes to anything, any content that's, you know, heart heavy is the word I'm going to use. All right. Heart heavy. Um, and normally this thick and quite intimidating, right? So when you pick the book up, you, you have all intents and purpose of reading it, right? But then you flip across and you look at the spine of the book and you're like, well, God dang, it's an inch thick. You know what I mean? So it's a little intimidating. This book right here is not. All right? Takes you right in, tells her story, and from a bold, beautiful, optimistic perspective, and I dig it. I dig it, I dig it, I dig it, all right? So we're going to be chopping it up with her tonight. And... um. We'll also let you go get the book. All right. Everybody going. Here's the thing. It's reggae month. Let me say happy reggae month, everybody. Happy Black History Month. You know what I mean? We're celebrating Black History Month. A lot of people don't even know who started the thing. Make sure you go research that. All right. Because that's the least name I hear it mentioned during Black History Month is the person who started the thing. All right. So we're going to talk a little bit about him later on. But here's the thing. No, you're the ting. No, you're the ting. No, you're the ting. No. Tell your friends to tell their friends to join us right here. All right. All the people watching on YouTube. Much love. Much respect. I appreciate y'all. Valda Wagwan. What's popping? All right. Um, Homegrown G. Cole, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, at my G. Cole. Hit us up. All the people calling me right now. I ain't going to pick up right now. All right. All the messages. I, I, I won't. I won't. All right. And I know you're looking in the camera. And I know you're looking at me. And I know you hear me talking, but you're still calling me. So here's the deal. I ain't picking up right now. All right. Not right now. All right. Again, thank you all so much for rocking with me. It's going to be a vibe, man. Dan Wagwan. Lodge up to each and every one of y'all. It's going to be a vibe tonight, all right? Gab Gab, what's up, baby girl? How are you? So, ladies and gentlemen, like I told you, special, special, special guests in the building, special show tonight. I'm going to bring her right front and center right away. You know what I mean? We ain't going to hold it up no more for none of y'all. You know what I'm saying? Janelle, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Hey, you. Loud. Loud and clear. What's popping? How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? How are you doing? It's Thursday, baby. I can't complain. Yep. It's Thursday. Yep. It's better than Monday. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I got through the book. And of course, ladies and gentlemen, I got to introduce her again. Her name is Janelle Reynolds, and she is the author of the book you've heard me talking about for the past couple of months and so forth. And I've um, been wanting to get to this convo with you because, one, on behalf of the masses listening, uh, the people who haven't read it yet, let me say thank you because it's a book that's going to help a lot of people. And a lot of times when it comes to putting out stuff like that, it's not, it's not about us. It's a, it's a selfless yeah. gesture because you're, yeah. you're, you're bearing your soul. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But so many people will benefit from this one. So let me start out just by saying thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Pleasure, pleasure, pleasure. I'm going straight in, going straight in. Um, the book speaks of loss of loved ones, sexual mm -hmm. abuse, and um, illness, mental and physical. Let's go back a little further. Whenever I bring on the musicians and the artists, we go in. I like to get the backstories and stuff like that because, you know, oh. eh, already. So mm -hmm. talk to me a little bit about young Janelle growing up in Jamaica with, oh. you know, back in the day as a kid, before any of this. What was life like growing up for you? Life was wonderful. I mean, I had my parents, my brothers, um, my three older brothers actually, and um, life was good. It was really good. Um, I think living in Jamaica, you get to see a lot of the, the, the things that people don't see normally, you know. And my parents were, were privileged enough to go visit the country every, well, at least once a month. Mm -hmm. And that's something to spend time with your family and, and, and just, do things that we, you know, we get so caught up in our lives that we we don't get to spend that quality time together. So at least once a month, that used to happen. And um, I must say, you know, like I said, growing up in Jamaica is one of the best things ever, you know. And you know, you you, you don't appreciate it until you leave, you know. And um, I'm telling True. you. <laughs> I miss it now, and I'm like, oh, I'm in Pennsylvania, and it's freezing here. And I'm like, I wish I could be back home. So, 
I know. <laughs> I'm not as cold as you, but I'm cold too, so I can relate. I can relate. <laughs> oh boy, I tell you, yes. So now, now the book itself, you know, I, I like the way it's titled because it it, it, it kind of gives us a course to follow. In other words, you say surviving loss of loved ones. Mm -hmm. um, let's start there. The first major loss that you um, suffered was that of your twin brother, right? Yes, yes. So it was um, a, a misdiagnosis of his illness and then he suffocated. And um, uh, that was the first lo major loss I had. Mm -hmm. So having losing your twin brother, you you start losing your other half, you know, and right. it's it was always us and we and Janelle and Janani, and it was like okay, well, it's just Janelle now, you know, and mm -hmm. so dealing with that was a major blow for me. Right. So. Right. It's amazing to hear you speak on that because you know people who have siblings and those people who don't, you know, when we talk about a twin, you know, mm -hmm. we always speculate on how the life of a twin is, you know, like you, you, you yeah. this bond that they have that nobody else probably will. Yeah. I've lost my brother recently and that was a tough one, but I can't even imagine your twin and not just your twin, but at such a young age. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so, yeah. So, so, so again, you know, I know it's years later, but we still always say sorry for the loss because I know, it, you know, these wounds don't necessarily heal. We learn to survive and to, and to, and to live on, but the wounds don't necessarily heal. Exactly. Exactly. So. All right. Now, one major struggle in understanding situations um, in my eyes, on my mind, is that whenever things happen to us as a child, mm -hmm. we, we can't necessarily articulate it the way we want to as a child. You know what I mean? Right. But, but now when you verbalize it as an adult, you know, it's, it's, it's still the eyes of the child and the feeling of the child and the hurt of the child, but you're verbalizing it as, as an adult. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And the whole concept of move on is, is null and void because it doesn't really happen. It but talk happen. to me now, mm -hmm. how, how now as an adult, when you, when, when you lay back and you look back on those early years, how did that loss, instead of just losing your, other half how did that loss as a as a 13 14 year old affect janelle as a as, as an adult woman it sure did i mean for the first three months after his past i didn't speak i i was quiet i stopped talking you know because he was the one that did a lot of talking to the both of us and 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 so um even though we went to different schools and that was the reason why we went to different schools is to, to allow the both of us to just kind of separate for a little bit and, and, um, you know, have our own friends and, and speak to each, to other people without having the, the other one there. And, um, so for the first three months, I would say I didn't speak. I, 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 I would just, so heartbroken and just so down that um, my parents didn't know what to do. You know, the school didn't know what to do. I, I stayed home for about two months before I went back to high school. Um, and that was more of a force, you know, like, mm -hmm. you know, you have to go back to school, you know, and um, I'm glad they did because it, it allowed me to kind of, open up a little bit to my friends and you know even though they didn't understand what was going on i didn't understand what was going on mm -hmm. um i was still able to kind of share and they were able to help me you know I, along the way my brothers my twin brothers friends they took on that role of being my big brother and so they were there every weekend making sure that, you know, Janelle is okay. You know, she went to school this week, did her homework, everything is fine. All right, well, we can go home, you know. So I'm grateful for that. So looking back, um, I have to say it, 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 it took a lot of people to help me to get to where I am today. Right. So Amazing.
Amazing. You know, it's it's I, I only know of one other person who lost um a twin and and amazingly enough it was just about the same age, high school, 13 years old. Mm-hmm. And and it's almost amazing, you know, the 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 damage, the hurt is yes. pretty is pretty similar. You can't you can't you can't avoid that. Um and hurt is one thing that life throws our way. But sometimes mm-hmm. it's almost that sometimes you get thrown a double whammy or so forth because mm-hmm. then shortly thereafter you lost your dad, right? Yes, yes. Um, right after that, my dad had a major heart attack and uh, passed away. Mm-hmm. Um, and that, oh gosh, was, I was beside myself, you know. Right. I mean, nobody was expecting that, you know, it just came out of the blue. And we, 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 just, we just got hit hard. And right. we, my mom and I, we knew at that point that, it was best for us to to move to the states at that point to be with our family and our friends there. Um, and so we left Jamaica shortly after that. But you know, um, being there without him, I think he was such a big force in our life mm-hmm. that you know, losing him was like, oh, oh my gosh, and what's gonna happen to the bills? You know, what's gonna happen? You know, who's going to take care of my mom? You know, who's going to take care of, you know, the light bill, the water bill, all of that stuff, the cable bill. I mean, those are things that we don't normally think of because, you know, you have somebody that is taking care of you and then right. it's gone. And then what do you do? Right. So um, certainly it was it was a tough one. <laughs> that was I a can only imagine. One. I can only imagine. And the, the amazing thing is you mentioned there that, you know, you guys ended up leaving, coming to the U.S. to be closer mm. to, to family. Um, I, I wonder a lot of times, you know, because lonely is a crazy place to be. And I use the word, you know, it's just a strange place to be um, because nobody can tell you how to feel. It's, you know, nobody can tell what lonely is. You know, everybody yes. says I'm lonely. He's lonely. She's lonely. But it's an individual thing. It's an idiosyncrasy. So mm-hmm. you, you can't tell me what my lonely is. Yes. So how important is it or how important was it to be able to, and it's not about leaving that situation because your heart's still there, mm-hmm. but being able to move, like you said, to be around friends and family that you can get some, some shoulders and to lean on and some arms to, you know what I mean? To strengthen you when you need that. How important is that for, for people going through loss? Oh, it's very important. I mean, you might think that you don't want it, at that mm-hmm. particular time, and 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 there were times where I was like, you know, I don't, I, I need to be by myself. I don't want to be around. I, I I I just don't want to be around anybody. Mm-hmm. But I think never give up. They they should your family should always be there. Friends should always try to encourage you and 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 and, and um. Even just sitting there, just sitting there and not doing anything. Right. It, it means a lot. It just means knowing you're not alone. Just knowing that you're not alone. Right, right. It's, it's important. Amazing. Amazing. Ladies and gentlemen, again, we're talking with Janelle Reynolds. And again, she's the author of the book, Wounded Survivor. I want you to go out and check it out. It's a really, really dope book. It'll inspire so many people. Um. So you moved to the U.S., you know, mm-hmm. the, crazy, the crazy, one of my favorite rappers, one well, of my favorite rappers is Tupac, and he has a song called Life Goes On. It's amazing how, no matter how much trauma comes your way, mm-hmm. right, no matter what you're going through, the yeah. hurt is here, but tomorrow is going to come. And yeah. the craziest thing, I think sometimes we feel guilty to even process this thought while we're in our hurt, right. the fact that life goes on. Goes on. You know what yep. I mean? Is yep. that something that you ever had to deal with? The fact that, you know what, I've got to move on, but I feel guilty. The fact that I'm getting up tomorrow, I'm smiling, but dad's not mm-hmm. here. Mm-hmm. I'm smiling, but my brother's not here. Mm-hmm. Is that something that you ever had to deal with? I still go through that even today. You know, mm-hmm. I still go through that. Um, it It's hard because, you, you know, you feel like, you they're supposed to be here and, and 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 they're not and then well what am I supposed to do? I'm supposed to be sad, you know, and but at the end of the day you're right. Life goes on and 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 with whether you want it to or not, you know, and so I think like 
for me, I fell apart. And I think that gave me the opportunity to kind of rebuild myself, you know, and to get to the place that I am today. And yeah, you know, I'm sad every now and again, the anniversaries come up and um, that makes me sad, but it's about celebrating their life and honoring them and, 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 and making sure that, you know, my nieces and nephews remember or we teach them who who the 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 loved ones are, you know, the grandma and the uncle and the grandpa and um just making sure that the legacy continues, you know. So Right. Right. That's where we're at. Love that, love that. And then, you know, here you are, you're in the US, you're growing up. Mm-hmm. College is around the corner now, so that's another part of life. That's 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 you going into from from a teenager into into young womanhood, growing mm-hmm. up into, into into adulthood. You know what I mean? And that in itself is a part, a transition that that requires so many you know others to be there for you also. Because going from a teenager into an adult, you need advice, you need strength, you need yep. this, you need that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yep. And and you're rolling solo. Rolling solo. You know what I mean? Um, we're going to get to even today because what I love about the book and about your story is not the trauma, but the triumph. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And, mm-hmm. and and a lot of times why I like speaking to people like yourself is because, you know, we, 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 we go through stuff and we may go through it on our own, but we're not the only one going through it. And oftentimes a lot of people think that, you know what, this is it. Today is today and, and that's it. But there is a tomorrow. You know what I mean? And strong so, people survive. And sometimes they just need to share that strength with others. So for exactly. that, I appreciate it very, 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 very much. Yeah. Um, when, when did you, when, when did the, you remember the day that the book was released? Uh, November 20th. Um, it was actually the day after my mom's birthday. So I released it November 20th, uh, 2020, last year. Wow. Wow. Yeah. What was that feeling when you got your hard copy of this book? Wow. I was like, whoa, <laughs> my name is on a book. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it, was, uh, it, was a, it was a nice feeling. Uh, I, I'll say it was a very nice feeling just to see my name on a book and to reread the book in a hard copy. And um, it, it, it just really reassured me that I, I did the right thing. You know, um, I had one goal in mind and that was to help somebody else. And I, I, I think that this book does a very good job doing that. So, um, you know, I, I, I chose to, to tell my story so that somebody else can benefit. You know, I don't know who, but it might be their survival guide. You know, my story being their survival survival guide. And so that's the reason why I wanted to share. So seeing my name was just amazing. (laughs) (laughs) I love that. And I'm sure, I'm sure um, those watching over you would be very, very proud. Um, You know, we talk about dad. We talk about um, your brother. Now you are in the U.S., you and your mom here to be strength yeah. and source of strength for each other yeah. going into those college years and so forth. And, um, and the losses continue. Mm-hmm. You know, I've heard, you know, mom, I hear you speak of mom. I've heard others speak of your mom, um, as just, you know, such a, a, a lovely personality. But before we even talk about loss of mom, talk to me a little bit about your mom, the lady she was, because oftentimes oh, you see somebody, wow. you see yeah. mom, you know yeah. what I mean? Yes. Yes. My mother, she was, she has a strong personality, you know. Um, didn't put up with foolishness, you know, but the disciplinarian, but she was a loving woman and loved to host everybody she could. She loved cooking. So I can guarantee you, if you came over to the house, there was going to be some food on the stove and we were going to have a good time, you know. Right. Um, but that was my mom, you know, even when she was sick, she was still mom and still trying to cater to everybody else and make sure that they were well fed and, you know, the games were being played and the music was being played and 
everybody just enjoying themselves, you know. Right. So that was my mom. Wow. Wow. Amazing. And, and I see and you, I see your face just light up when you speak of mom. It's like, you know, people don't realize sometimes, you know, when, when, when it comes to mom, moms have a place where I tell my father all the time, hey, man, don't feel no way. Don't feel no way. <laughs> we love you. But mom has a spot that yeah, is yeah. just her spot. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> now, you know, you're here. This is the strongest person you know because she shared the losses with you, right? You've lost mm -hmm. a brother, she's lost a son. You've lost a dad, she's lost a husband. That's your yeah. source of strength. That's who you're pulling your strength from. And yeah. at one moment, she is that. And then another moment, you're watching her. Because the thing about loss is this, sometimes it's immediate and sometimes it's not. Mm -hmm. You know, um, the, the, the lack of immediacy when it comes to loss it, the benefit of it is it gives us an opportunity to, 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 you know, we always say, well, I wish I had the opportunity to say something. I wish I had the mm -hmm. opportunity to say goodbye, some last words, whatever. Whereas if something is immediate, you don't get that opportunity. But right, even enduring right. that process can be traumatic in itself. Talk to me a little bit about, you know, being there and um, mom leaving. That's the word I'm going to use, mom leaving. How was that, the effect of that and the effect of that on you? Yeah, um, it was hard. I can tell you that that day, you know, it was it, it was just a weird experience. I have a little dog, her name is Sparkle. And normally every morning she would run up the stairs and go check my mom and, you know, she and my mom would hang out for a little bit and they'll go back to sleep and, you know, they'll come back down and everything will be fine. And that particular morning, my dog didn't go up the stairs. She sat at the bottom of the stairs. And I'm like, well, what's going on? You know, something's happening. And, and I just knew that that day was going to be the last day with her. Mm -hmm. And um, so it, it was, you know, we, I was able to go in and say my goodbyes, you know, and um she looked at me and i know she was just trying so hard to say you know are you sure you're gonna be okay are you are you are you sure i could just see it in her eyes that she was just that was a major thing is that she was worried about you know mm -hmm. just making sure that i was gonna be okay mm -hmm. if she ever left and um we had a harder heart on I will tell you it's November 5th, um, about one month before her passing. Mm -hmm. And well, she just apologized. She just said she was just so sorry, but you know, she couldn't do this anymore. It was just getting too hard and she needed right. to go to sleep, you know, and I and I and I had to accept it because I I knew that she fought for four years. When doctors told her that she would only live for six months, mm -hmm. so for four years she fought, and I had to uh, accept that part that and I, I know that she she was fighting for me, and um the 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 time came, and I had to accept it. And mm -hmm. so that night, I just held her hand, and you know, I just you know, we prayed, my brother was there, my grandmother was there, and the nurse was there. And mm. we just stood around and, you know, we sang some songs and she just passed on. And it was a beautiful experience in the sense that I know she wasn't feeling any pain. Right. And she, I know she went to heaven and I know that, you know, um, she's with my brother and my dad, and you know, the, there's a verse in the Bible that says to be absent from your body is to be present with the Lord, and so that's my um go to to know that you know, um, I know that they're okay and I know that they're watching over me, right. so it was hard, but um, I know that she's in a better place, right? Right, right. Yeah. Now, you, you, the amazing thing I'm, I'm grasping here is just listening to you speak and then even reflecting on the words of the book. You mentioned just now, you quoted from, from, from the scriptures. You mentioned also, you know, growing up with that spiritual background. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, however, 
what I do realize a lot of times is going through tr experiences like these will make you question your spirituality, oh, yeah. make you question oh, your yeah. faith. And, and, and I did that with you. Talk to me a little bit about that. Oh, yeah. I mean, there was one, even one point where I gave up on God. I stopped going to church. I was like, you know what? This, this just doesn't make sense to me. You know, how can I be a Christian? How can I be praying? And I've been praying for healing and praying for my family and um, all of this is still happening, you know, but yeah. you know what? God, God lost his son too, you know, and, 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 and um, at the end of the day, he understands, you know, he lost his son. So he knows what we're going through. He knows the pain that we're feeling. He knows you know, what it's like to, to, to want to give up and, 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 and just throw in the towel. So um, I had to come to that realization that, you know, God will never waste my pain and that there is a purpose for my pain to, and which is to help somebody else. And um, that's my goal and that's what I'm living for right now. You know, I'm, I'm actually really very sick and, you know, I'm, I'm going through a lot of um, physical illness right now. But I think, you know, in spite of that, I'm trying to use my experiences to help somebody else, you know, even if I have to do it from this nursing home here. And, you know, um, it's, it's, there's a purpose for my pain. Right, so, right. And, you know, it, it's beautiful to hear you say that because, again, if, if, even we talk about selflessness and selfishness. And if you go through stuff and you internalize it and you go through it on your own, it doesn't make you a selfish person. It makes you human. Right. Mm -hmm. But but to be able to share it with the world, especially for 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 the for the sake of helping others. Right. Knowing you are aware you're not the only person that 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 it's not even so much about those people who have gone through and those people who are going through. But to think mm -hmm. ahead about those people who will go through because who none of us are immune to the yeah. trials and tribulations of life. So for that, again, mm -hmm. eternally, eternally grateful. Now, I'm following the thread of the book. And again, surviving loss of loved ones, also surviving sexual abuse. Mm -hmm. We are in reggae month and I do a lot of stuff on here about the culture. The culture for us is the yeah. music, the food and all that stuff. But the unfortunate thing about the culture sometimes is there are certain things that are plagued within the culture that's almost normal within Jamaican society. Yeah. And it is sexual abuse mm. right most women and even men that you speak to if it's not one it's the other but most people won't reach the age of adulthood without having encountered some form of sexual abuse yeah right now you're you you, you just lost your brother right mm -hmm. and um at a vulnerable state you know what yeah. i mean yeah um talk to me a little bit about that encounter for you sure so I had just, I mean, literally just lost my brother. It had been maybe, mm, give or take two or three months. And um, met this one person and he just decided that, you know what, um, take advantage of me at that vulnerable state. And um, it happened multiple times, but I think, I was so frightened and so taken aback by what was happening. I didn't know what was happening to me. Mm -hmm. I was like, wow, um, okay, this is happening to me. Okay, um, what do I do about this? Do I tell my parents? Do I tell somebody else? You know, um, and I chose to stay silent because right. I didn't really understand that you know, what just happened was molestation and um, I didn't want, I felt like, okay, I'm going to get in trouble yeah. if I say something. And, and I think that's the kind of mentality that we have is that we're the ones that will get in trouble. The other person's going to slide mm -hmm. by and get a slap on the wrist or, you know, and if go that. on with their, with, their, with their life, you know, yeah. but the other person is the one one left dealing with the consequences of that that action you know yeah. um yeah. so
So I dealt with that um, at age 14 and again at age 16 with another individual. And that one was more surprising to me because it was somebody else in power. And um, I just, just could not understand why they would wait until when I've just lost somebody. I just felt like every time I lost somebody, this is what would happen. So you, then I started to associate this with loss. Mm. And um, I was like, no, something is not right. But I just felt like I couldn't tell anybody. And I know in the book, I kind of mentioned that my mother, um, I didn't want to tell her because I was just so ashamed of what happened. But also, I didn't want her to, to hurt her feelings because she was the one that kind of said, you know, I think you should go out with this person and have lunch, dinner with this person. Um, they will really want to counsel you. And um, I think you should do this. Do it for me and see how it goes. Right. And this counseling turned into something else that yeah. shouldn't have. And so, you know, it's, it's, it's hard, but right. you know, you, you, I don't know, you, you kind of lose sight of who you are for a second there, you know, right. and lose a sense of yourself. Right. And for a long time, they held on to, my mind and had control of my heart and yeah. had control of everything within me and that's one of the reasons why at the end of this chapter at the end of the book i wrote that letter right. because i needed to have them know that they no longer control my mind they no longer control my heart they no longer mm -hmm. control my life right and I had to forgive them so that I can move on. Right. So right. that's where I am. I found that to be extremely, extremely powerful because when it comes to abuse, whether it be mental, physical, sexual, any mm -hmm. abuse, oftentimes we talk to people around us. We talk to ourselves and so forth. What we don't do a lot of times is talk to our abusers. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So I thought it was very, very powerful that you addressed them, mm -hmm. you know, because a lot of times, you know, counselors and the church and so forth, they'll tell you to, you know, forgive because the forgiveness is for you. It, and that part is definitely true. It's not so much for them, but I think there's something powerful in being able to speak to them whether, and this mm -hmm. is for, this is forever literature. So even if they don't hear it today, they'll hear it tomorrow. You know what I mean? Yeah, right. It's almost yep. like, let me take my power back from you. Yeah, yeah. And this hurt, this shame, this pain. Mm -hmm. Let me give you that. So let's let's swap right here. All right, give my power mm -hmm. back. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and yep. you take the shame and roll with it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yep. So that's what I gathered from that. Was that your intent? That was my intent. Definitely my intent. Um, because I have not seen or heard from these people in many years. I don't know where they are. I don't wish to know, but I needed to let them know that. The power they had over me mm -hmm. wasn't going to happen anymore. Oh. And it took so many years for me to get to that point. But yeah. um, I'm there now and I'm there. I'm at the point where I'm like, you know what? I forgive them. Um, I forg forgive them for me, right. not for them, for me, so that I can move on with my life and live my life where I'm not afraid of somebody. Um, somebody who tries to hug me or somebody, you know, says something, give me a compliment or, you know, um, anything like that. So, right. Yeah. 
you know, it's, it's amazing you say that because that's, you know, as we speak to people who have, uh, who have had um, instances of abuse, or we speak to those people who, who um, operate in that arena from a professional standpoint, they speak of mm-hmm. that a lot in terms of the, the scars that, that, that you carry with you. Somebody, it's, it's challenging to, to embark upon new and real relationships, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Um, whether it be platonic or, or romantic relationships because of the fact that you're always on guard, and rightfully yeah. so, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Mm-hmm. especially if whenever you do choose to let down your guard, the opportunity does reoccur just from a different vantage point. Mm-hmm. And you mentioned mm-hmm. here in the book, it actually happened again later on as you tried to move on. Yeah. I think, you know, like I said, you, you talk about it happening again. It happened twice again. Mm-hmm. Um, and so dealing with that, I think, it's 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 just it's just one of those things that you you kind of look at yourself and you're like, really, is this really happening again? You know, right. um, no, it's not happening. This, this, I don't think it's happening. You know, let me just kind of sit down for a little bit and chill, and mm-hmm. you you kind of try to kind of play it off, mm-hmm. and it's not working, you know, because you know, deep down, you know that this is wrong. No, you, you reach a point where you're like, I recognize all the signs. I recognize all the pinpoints. I can pinpoint what is going wrong. And I got to that point where I was like, okay, um, yes, uh, this is, this is wrong. So, um, for a long time, I think I I blamed myself and I put putting myself in that position. But I think I had to um, I had to learn that you know it, it was my abuser's fault. It's not my own. It's my abuser's. And so I um, once I got to that point where I learned that, and then. I was able to write the letter to my abusers. Um, I think it it made me a a bit stronger, a lot stronger um, to deal with what I'm dealing with right now. Right. I love it. You you know, you know, as I listen to you speak and um and even thinking about it a lot, you know, I had conversations with some young men before, you know, had a symposium at a school and we we spoke Mm -hmm. about everything and People, well, as I spoke to them, I realized that what young boys, mm-hmm. teenage boys and, and men in general um, associate rape and sexual abuse with is violence mm-hmm. and, and, and injury. And, and, and if there's no violence and there's no injury, then, then you know, right. it, didn't, it didn't happen. You know what I'm saying? And that's something that we've got to get rid of, not just from the vantage point of, 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 of abusers and potential abusers, but for victims themselves, because they mm-hmm. too, they too get stuck in that rut of thinking, well, of course, of course. I don't have any bruises. To sh- I don't have the black eye to show. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't have the broken arm to show or whatever the case may be. So who's going to believe me? Mm-hmm. Um, exactly. did, you, did you go through some of that? Though, as far I as- did. I, I sure did. Um, you know, like I said in the book, you know, nobody's going to believe me. For a long time, I even started to say, I don't believe what happened. You know, I said, you know what, it didn't happen. And so I just brushed it off as if it didn't happen. And it wasn't until I got to therapy that I had to come right up front with it and, and, and acknowledge the fact that, yes, it did. It happened, and this is how we're going to deal with it and mm-hmm. how we're going to move on from it because we're at a point where I couldn't, I couldn't, you know, the statute of limitations have passed, and so it, it, it I couldn't report it at that point, mm-hmm. but, um, you know, you, you get to the point where. You, you learn a lot from just sitting around and, and observing things, you know? And mm-hmm. um, I think 
I had to go through what I went through just to be where I'm at because I don't think I would be able to deal with what I'm dealing with now. Um, So I think, you know, like I said, there's a purpose for my pain and what I've been through. Gotcha. They say the hardest uh, steel is what comes through the hottest fire. So, oh yeah, you know. Yeah. <laughs> now, you know, we 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 talk about life and the transitions, and I love again. I like the way the book is laid out. Again, there's something to it that I really dig, which is the word I'm going to use is simplicity. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Oftentimes, oftentimes the, the the information is there, and we really want the information, but we want it in its simplest form. Mm-hmm. You know. And um, we're not reading it to to be sad. You know what I mean? There's a lot of things going on in life. So we don't want the sad book. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And the book itself to me is cover to cover encouragement, cover to cover strength, cover to cover growth, cover to cover just brilliance. And I I, I dig it and I implore people that they got to go grab it for that reason and, 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 and so many other reasons. But for that, no, college, I mean, it's a beautiful book, but you didn't go to college to be a writer. Talk to me a little bit about <laughs> about uh, what you were doing in college. Yes, so I went to college to be a doctor officially. Um, I did biology. I got my bachelor's of science in biological sciences, um, and that's what I wanted to do. So I ended up doing research. Um, when my mother died, I kind of took a step back from medical school and started to do a lot of research. So um, I ended up moving to Pennsylvania to do market research for pharmaceutical companies, um, where I focused a lot on oncology drugs. Mm-hmm. Um, so. I did that for five years, and then I decided to transition into the consumer market. So I did a lot of consumer products, so things like, uh, you know, some something simple, um, like maybe the drinks that you're drinking, the water, or mm-hmm. the, the soda that you drink, you know. So I, I focused on that a lot. But I still stayed within the research arena. Um, of market research so that's what i did and then last year over the last maybe two or three years people have been telling me you know you should write a book you should write a book and it the thought had always been in the back of my mind and last year i had the opportunity um to just kind of sit down and just journal and i started journaling and before you know it, I had two chapters down and I was like, oh, wow, I can turn this into a book. Mm-hmm. And so I transferred everything from my phone because I had been just typing everything on my phone, transferred everything from my phone to Microsoft Word on my computer. And then I just kept writing and mm-hmm. I wrote until the book was done. And it took me about two and a half weeks to get that completed and um it was a long two and a half weeks but um i'm grateful because it it made me see what the potential that i have um of moving forward with my life and 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 moving on Mm -hmm. um not necessarily getting over but certainly moving forward and um that was how this book came about so yep research providing (laughs) (laughs) yeah if somebody had told you we're going to be writing books you know you'd be like no you're right (laughs) (laughs) now you know amazingly enough we talk about we talk about the books and so forth and um your field your avenue of, of study um, versus where we are today. You mentioned in the book also being in school and um, having them identify you as having some form of a mental illness. Mm-hmm. And you mentioned finding out right then and there in a school situation that you're being Baker acted right there yeah. in school. All right. Yeah. That in itself, because one, 
not very many, maybe, maybe you did because of your avenue of study, but not very many people have an idea what Baker Acne is. You know yeah, what exactly. I mean? Exactly. Yeah, right. so take me there. What, what, what? Oh, wow. Take that me is, to that moment. Oh gosh, that story. Um, I had no idea what Baker Acne was either until <laughs> it actually happened. But essentially, I had been really down and down and out. It had been my twin brother's anniversary coming up. You know, my mom was sick. I was, I was sick. I was just really, I think I had pneumonia for like six months straight and I just could not get better. And um, I decided to go to the doctor, which like, if you're sick, you go to the doctor. and. You know, at the same time, my mother called, and um, the doctor was like, oh, let me speak to your mom. So she took the phone, went and talked to my mom, came back. And what I learned from my mother was that uh, the doctor felt that um, I was really depressed and I needed to go to the hospital. So my mother at, the, at that time said, oh, sure, send her to the hospital if she's sick, she needs to go to the hospital, send her to the hospital. But that's not the hospital that the doctor was referring to. Right, um, right, right. So uh, my mother had no clue um, that's what she meant. And, right. um, you know, I went over to the counseling office and I, you know, I had told them, you know, I tried coming in last week and, you know, nobody called me back and I, I tried, but I, nobody's tried to help me. So right. here it is that I am sitting in the counseling office and I have no recollection of what happened. I totally, what they, in psychological terms, they say dissociated and totally went off to wherever I went and just completely blacked out for about two hours. Mm -hmm. Completely blacked out. And um, they had to call the police. So mm -hmm. that was the best thing they felt they could do for me at that point because it was a weekend and they could not leave me alone for the weekend on school property mm -hmm. so they felt the best thing to do was call the police and have the police escort me to the hospital and so that's what they did um that in itself is a very embarrassing um thing to go through because where you come down the stairs you're like right by the cafeteria mm. and right by this breezeway and so there's a everybody's there watching what's going on right. but thank god these police officers they never arrested me they mm. just escorted me to the police um vehicle and um took me in right and um i spent 72 hours in the hospital just being um monitored and um my mom and my aunt and my brother and my friends and everybody came down to the, they came to the hospital because they were like, they have no idea what Baker Act means and, you know, mm -hmm. something is clearly wrong. And so they all came to the hospital and the doctors saw that and they saw that, you know, I had the support that I needed. And so they decided that they would release me um, into my mom's care. Um, provided that I would go back to Orlando um, and get into psychological counseling and see a psychiatrist as well. Gotcha. Gotcha. You know, it, it's amazing, you know, and, and, and I, I mentioned the stuff that's chronicled here in the book, um, your transparency, the honesty, um, you know, talking about it all, because what happens is this for a lot of people, it's, I, I oftentimes mention books as being the cheat code and the blueprint mm -hmm. or whatever the case may be. So if, if something's going to happen, something's about to happen, something's happening, yo, I saw it in the books. I can, you know what to do, how to approach it, how to, you know what I mean? Yeah. How to yeah. take care of yourself. So again, for that, we're appreciative. And a lot of the people right now are learning so much from you mm -hmm. and from this book. You know, again, 
following the, uh, the, 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 the chronicle of the book here, we're talking about mental and yep. physical illnesses, right? Because mm -hmm. I'm a firm believer that one will ultimately lead to the other, right? Mm -hmm. Now, talking about mental illness, one thing I must say is, like you said, when you are, especially from a Caribbean background, growing up in a Caribbean community, exactly. you know, exactly. the, tab the tabooism that comes mm -hmm. along with it. Because when you grow up in a Jamaica, you know, there is no middle ground. You know, you're either, exactly. Exactly. You're either good or you're mm -hmm. off the rails. Yeah. Right? Yep. So is it is it a home or Bellevue? I saw them look on the thing, right? Mm -hmm. So but if there's but but there's so many things that we can learn and get ready to and prepare ourselves for um just so we can walk this walk and walk this journey and come out on the other end, not unscathed, but okay. Okay, you know what I mean? Exactly. But okay, and sometimes all we're looking for is just want to be okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Yep. yep. Now the thing about journals and chronicling stuff is we don't go through our lives by ourselves. So, mm -hmm. you know, once you put something together, then one, there are other people mentioned in it. Secondly, the thing that you deal with a lot of times is all the folks around that were like, man, I was there. How mm -hmm. did I miss that? I didn't know. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that is something that you also have to prepare yourself for it. A primal guilt from other people. It's almost like Definitely. you didn't do some stuff because of the guilt that you were, but now you got to anticipate some guilt and so forth. Did you oh, ever sorry. think about stuff like those when you were about to put this book out? I knew that I was going to get some questions. Mm -hmm. I um, thought about it, but I knew that the end result of it was going to be more beneficial than Mm -hmm. You know, getting a few questions from my friends and family about, well, why didn't you tell me that you were suicidal or why didn't you tell me that you were drinking so much, you know, or, mm -hmm. you, you know, or things like that. So um, I thought, yeah, I did think about it, but I, I, I have put that to the side, knowing that this book was going to help somebody else. So, um mm -hmm. That was the reason why I never stopped. I I continued with the process of getting the book published. Right. So. And um, if anything, regardless, I I I'd be very very proud. You know what I mean? Just 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 based on because again we talk about trauma, but it's about triumph. Mm -hmm. And knowing that when, when you speak about just the stuff you've been through, being you know having suicidal thoughts and all that stuff. What we have to think about pretty much is it's 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 February twenty fifth, it's twenty twenty one, and we're having this conversation, which means you're here and you're you're you're, yeah. you're on the right path, and you're you know what I mean. Your triumph is 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 obvious. Yeah. Um, you mentioned something in here too, which I think is more real than 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 I've ever heard, is the concept of wearing the mask. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean. We when you think about the mask, all right. Most a lot of people to your left and to your right are wearing a mask. We just yeah. don't know because mm -hmm. the purpose of masks is one is to protect your identity. But yeah. truth be told, it's also to protect your loved ones. You know, yeah. I'm a com I'm a comic book head, and nine times out of ten, why these superheroes wear the masks is because they don't want their villain, their villains, and their nemesis to come after their families and their loved yeah. ones. Yeah. Yeah. So we talk about the mask. Um, I recall over the past of the court couple last couple of years, or not last, but over the, some years, I'd, I'd run into you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But you're always the bubbly personality, always ever mm -hmm. the, the, the bright, beautiful smile and just that jovial personality. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but like you mentioned, there is the mask. Talk to me a little bit about the concept of the mask and how yeah. difficult it is to wear that mask while underneath it going through so much. Oh my goodness, it's 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 hard. I mean, that mask you put it on and you just go about your business. You do what you have to do. You, it's almost as if you change into somebody else. And you know, I I used to say that I had this work Janelle, and work Janelle was gonna be the one that took care of making sure that my job gets done and it gets done well um uh school work gets done you know whatever needs to get done gets done and um being around family then that, that was a different you know when i would come out 
and she would be the one that would make people laugh and we'll play some kaluki and um right. you know we we'll, we we'll have some fun and we we'll dance and we we'll play some music and stuff you know but it's it's hard it's hard because when you come home you know, you're so exhausted and mm -hmm. you're like wow i'm just ready to go to sleep for like three days right you know? right. so that mask is it's 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 beneficial for that person but it's hard to maintain mm -hmm. because at the end of the day you come home and you're just flat out tired right and it's that's heavy. where if you that's where you run into problems right, right? because you, you come home you're tired and you're like i don't want to do this anymore you know right. you get to that point where it's like I, I I'm done. I I am so exhausted. Mm -hmm. I can't do it anymore, you know. And right. if you don't, if you're not careful, and you don't have that people in the corner that support you, then you know that's when bad things happen. You know, you try to commit suicide. You do other things. You self harm. You all these things that just is not necessarily the, the right way to deal with things, you know, so. Right. You know, it's it's the concept of the mask comes up a, a lot, just just conversation wise. And I've often wondered, you know, what's the bigger challenge, you know, putting that mask on or taking that mask off? You know what I mean? Um, but so w w w when you do look at it, though, you know, like you said, the challenge of it sometimes is the mask is on to put on a facade for the people looking. Mm -hmm. But at some point in time, the, it gets heavy. And the only way to get away from that weight is to, in some regard, almost start putting on the mask for yourself. So it's almost kind of like, oh, exactly. I, I, I've been lying to y'all, so I got to start lying to me now because it's mm -hmm. becoming too much of a burden. You know what I mean? Yep, yep. So it's it's, it's yep. one of those things. And, I'm, and I'm, again, I'm glad you put that here because so many people not just from one extreme to the other it doesn't have to be going through the same stuff but some a lot of people don't realize how unhealthy it is to wear the mask because i mm -hmm. think we are conditioned to think it's normal that oh everybody has you know has our has, yeah. has a mask that we yeah. put on yeah and and it's not supposed to be yeah exactly. yeah now here's one thing that i love i appreciate and i gotta give props on is that when again the whole concept of our mental health coming okay. from our from our background is something we shy away from acknowledging and stuff like that. And mm -hmm. oftentimes when you see somebody out there getting help for their mental health, they were forced into it. You get what right. I'm saying? Right. But you got to a point to where you acknowledged and realized that you needed assistance. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And that to me is very, very powerful. Talk to me a little bit about that. Yes. Yeah. So I, 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 got to the point where um i was living in pennsylvania and i decided that you know what i i need help i can't go through this again and end up back in the hospital which i did but i can't just go through my life just living the way i was living and i knew i needed help so i i, I decided to sh shop around and I went to several different therapists and I found until I found the right one. And I've been with that therapist now for almost seven years. Mm -hmm. And um, she's helped me along the way. You know, she's really, you know, um, giving me some nuggets and some coping skills to help me to cope with what I've been going through, you know, my daily life. And um, I think it's important, you know, if you, I think it's important for everybody to have a, to have a therapist, you know, or have someone that they can rely on or someone that they can talk to and um, share that, 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 that person will be non-judgmental mm -hmm. and um, able to, to assist you in any way they can. So that was my reason for going into therapy. 
And then at that point, that's when I found out all these other trauma-related issues that I had. And so, you know, the major depressive disorder, the PTSD, the anxiety, panic attacks, I mean, all those things. I had no idea I was going through them, but I was going through them, you know? Right, right. right. So, um, it's, I'm, I'm glad that I found a therapist. I'm glad that I found a psychiatrist as well. Um, and they both work in tandem. So, mm. to ensure that, you know, I'm, I'm getting the proper care that I need and the proper medication that I need. Right. So, Right. See, the thing is, you know, and as I as I as I look into it and and do research and stuff like that, you know, not just again, there are different types of trauma, but going through the trauma sometimes it's like being stuck on an island. You know what I mean? And, mm-hmm. and, and when people talk about you being stuck on the island, you know, they they oftentimes talk about and think about you. You know, sometimes we got to take a minute to focus on on the island, you know what I mean? The environment around you, how conducive it is or not to your, you know, mental health. You know, so what I, what I really dig, and again, I, I must commend you for is 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 you making the, the necessary steps, mm-hmm. what you've got to do and make sure that you're in a healthy environment. Because yeah. again, stuff, there's so much stuff around us on a daily, um, the, the stresses of, 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 of work, the stresses of relationships, the stresses mm-hmm. of traffic, you know what I mean? Everything. So just being able to say, you know what, let me take myself out of that and, and nurture myself. Mm-hmm. Um, what I what I will do is this. I'm gonna ask you to talk to a couple of people because you have spoken to the abusers, you know what I mean? And they're gonna hear that for as long as they can, right? Um, speak a little bit to because we we have people who are, and it's unfortunate, it's it saddens me to say this, but others are going to, others are, right? Others have. Mm-hmm. Speak, speak to a young Janelle or a young, a young, a young girl, you know, um, going through or about to go through stuff at that age. Because again, the great thing is as an adult, you can verbalize nor and articulate the stuff you couldn't yeah. then. Speak to the young girl or even young boy that is faced with stuff that you were faced with at that time. You know, I, I it, first of all, like I would say to tell you a story, you know, I, Something I never did, and I, I something I regret is not telling my story. And I, I think that that's the biggest thing I would say is to tell a story because you 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 don't know what your words could do. Your words could be the, that page for somebody else's survival guide. I said that before, and I I keep saying it again. It could be the page for someone's survival guide. So. Tell your story. Um, also, I, I, I said this as well, that God will not waste your pain. So just know that at the end of the day, there's a purpose for your pain. There's purpose in in in, in you going through what you're going through or will go through. You know, just know that um, sometimes you have to fall apart in order to rebuild yourself and you know there's another verse in the bible in psalms i believe that says those who sow in tears shall reap in joy Mm -hmm. and 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 i i I, I really believe that i really do believe that that at the end of the day there's the sun will come out tomorrow and you will survive you will triumph over that and um Lean on others. Don't don't go through this by yourself. So, so if you can find somebody to talk to, find a therapist, find a psychiatrist, find somebody that you can um, relate to, and 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 they can understand. I think a lot of times we try to this whole ter- therapy thing is such a taboo, and um, but you know what, at the end of the day, you're the one that is getting the help. So um, I truly believe that if there is somebody there that you um, can relate to, then 
lean on that person. Wow. Now, l l the other thing I, I, I would love to ask you is this. Um, again, your background mm -hmm. um, educationally is within the sciences. Um, yes. You know, and, 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 and the sciences and spirituality don't live in the same area code, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. The same zip code, you know, mm -hmm. one color is the other and so forth. So we talk about believing in the sciences, the scientists, the doctors, the professionals, but how important, how, how instrumental do you think it is or was to your success to hold on to what you almost lost, which was that spiritual grounding? It's very important. I think, you know, um, I always say this all the time, you know, I'd rather be a Christian and be wrong than not be a Christian and be wrong, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so I think my life as, as my spirituality, you know, and leaning on God for, um, what I'm going through, you know, is important because in spite of what challenges I'm I I face, you know, and um in spite of those challenges, I know that he's there for me and I know that um he won't let me down. You know, he never has left me, even when I thought he did. Mm -hmm. He never did. And so, even when I was going to throw in the towel all those times, he was still there, you know, right. and he would send that one person to give me that phone call that, you know, you, you never thought was coming, but it came at the right moment and you end up not doing anything, you know? And I think like moments like that, he, he provides those moments for you and it's, 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 it's encouraging. Mm -hmm. So I think um, it's important. Very yeah. important. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. We talked to, like I said, a bunch of people. Mm -hmm. um, the, some people who I think we should talk to, um, because a lot of times, you know, we always get the hindsight is twenty twenty. And had you spoken to me about it and had you told your story and had you spoken up, then things would have been different. When the truth is, it may not have been. It you know what I mean? Uh, and, and more likely than not, if there was a difference, it wouldn't have been the difference that you were looking forward to. Um, you know, a lot of times there are things and people to protect and a lot. And, and, mm -hmm. and, and, and you know, and, and like we always say, nine times out of ten, it's something and someone close to home. Yeah. Right. So. Sometimes we're protecting that. We're also protecting our choices and our decisions. You know, maybe as a parent, as a guardian, as a friend, as a, as a spouse, I drop the ball. And for me to accept certain things and even speak on certain things would be me accepting that I dropped the ball and I don't want to do that. But I'd love for you to speak to friends and family of so much a young person that may be going through that. And when I say friends, could be speak to me, speak to all of us out here because we we know people, but we don't know what they're going through. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So speak to just not 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 the, not the victims, not the victimizers, but let's speak to us, the people around who may have people in their lives that are going through something. Yeah, I think you know, um one not blame yourself, two, not blame the victims, you know, because at the end of the day, they are hurting and it's important for you, for us to be there for them at that point. Um, I think you, you, you mentioned dropping the ball and, 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 and I can imagine what my parents would have felt if I had told them. Um, I, I can imagine the hurt because they trusted these people too, you know. Um, like, I, like I said, it's, it's, it's somebody, usually these people are so close to home that, you know, your parents will be like so shocked if they ever found out who these people are. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, just, just be there for 
the person and just, you know, um, accept the fact that it's not, no, it's not your fault. At the end of the day, it's not your fault either. You know, um, the abuse is the, the wrong thing. And they're the ones that need, deserve the blame. They're the ones that deserve um, the consequences of their actions, not us. And certainly not you either, you know. Right. And I think at the end of the day, it's just a matter of just supporting one another and being there for each other and um, just giving that rapport back and forth, you know, because it's, it's, it's hard to go through sexual abuse or physical abuse or any, anything like that and not have somebody to tell, you know, or not have somebody to, to share it with. And, whether it's you, you don't share it because of shame or you're afraid that, you know, your parent or that other person might be um, upset with you or whatever the situation is. But I think, you know, just being there for that person goes a far way, goes wow. a far, far way. Wow. You know, as, as you speak, I, 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 you know, pull on certain words you say, and um, it's it's amazing pain when you know when we hold it in. It's a personal thing. When we let it out, it's a shared thing. And um, mm -hmm. there's pain here, but nine times out of ten, it's us and our loved ones that are going to share that pain. And the person who inflicted the pain is off in the sunset, mm -hmm. pain free. You yep. know what I mean? Yep. Now, as human beings. You know, it, it, it puts us in a position sometimes to, 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 to think ill, you know what I mean? And to, to harbor certain thoughts, which I don't think helps the process. But we are human beings. Yep. Right. You know what I mean? And again, I'm circling right back to that's the reason why I am so grateful for you, one, putting your heart, putting your soul, putting your time, your effort, your energy into this book. Because I think it is going to do a world of help for a lot of people. Um, the approach in this book, I think is ideal. I think, honestly, this is probably how people should approach writing literature that's dealing with personal pain or just, you know, we, we see all these self-help books and all kinds of books that are encyclopedias, you know what I mean? Yep. But this yep. right here to me was done perfectly. And you summed up your experiences, but you also summed up your, 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 your even in the title, your survivorship, you know what I mean? Making it through the ordeal and the obstacles. And for that, again, congrats. Thank you know, you. I always wonder when you go through the fire, when you're going through the fire, when life is a day by day experience and, um, you know, you're still healing and growing. Mm -hmm. What? At the end of the day, what, what do you look forward to right now? What's, what's, you know, what's, we, I'm a daydreamer. So when you sit, when you sit down in solace and in the privacy of your own domain and you're daydreaming about tomorrow, what is Janelle looking forward to? So like I mentioned before, I am extremely ill right now. I live in a nursing home. Um, I am going to what they call pulmonary fibrosis, lung involvement, lupus. Um, and so technically, you know, the doctors have given me a, a, a length of time left, but I have not really listened to them. Um, but I think what I think about right now is just, being able to be self-sufficient, I think, um, to the point that I can actually move out of the nursing home into an independent living facility mm -hmm. and from there back into the community. Um, so right now, my goal is to um, walk again. Um, and right now, I'm using a walker. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, not able to walk very far, but I'm 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 doing physical therapy and occupational therapy every day. Um, trying to get to that point where I can walk 
and do things on my own, you know, like take care of myself, you know, get dressed, get, you know, feed myself, you know, things like that. And um, go from there. So that's next on my agenda is to, to get well enough so that I can get out of the nursing home. Gotcha. 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 That independence that you, um, you know, that you miss. Yeah. Um, but it's, 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 it's on the horizon. It's coming back because you know what? The strength is there and doctors could, I mean, they're saying what Peter tells them. I was at the doctor the other day and she told me that she went to med school for science, but she gets paid to, to do administrative work. So, yeah. you know, type <laughs> stuff up and go what the computer says. So yeah, they're half off, but don't tell them I said that though. <laughs> but, but I tell you this, there's so much more of your story that needs oh, to be yeah. told. So you're yeah. going to be, you know, be here for a long time doing chapter two, three, or should I say, I know, you know, know. volume two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's all good. It's all good. Tell, no, I've spoken about the book. You know, it's like I record music and I, and I release music and, you know, it's, it's sometimes it's, it's a while before we get to absorb it from the listener's perspective. Because we're always on one side of the microphone, one side of the studio, you know what I mean? And then when you put it out, you know, it's very rarely that some you're just driving and minding your business and it pops on the radio and that's when you get to absorb it. You know what I mean? Or somebody who doesn't know it's you is driving by and playing it. And that's when you get to absorb it from that vantage point. You're the author. Yeah. But talk to me about this book now from the other vantage point. You said you, you, you got the opportunity to actually now go back and read it from the reader's yeah. perspective. Yeah. Talk to me a little bit about that experience, reading your words back on paper. Oh, wow. So reading this, reading this book, you know, um, it's, it's like you said, it's a, it's a easy read. It's very simple. It's, it's just to the point. I didn't want to get into this whole, explanation of everything that didn't make sense or didn't add to the story. Um, but Wounded Survivor, it's, 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 it's certainly dear to my heart. And um, it's, it's a book that I, I, I can say will help other people, um, whether they have gone through loss, whether they have gone through sexual abuse, or any sort of mental or physical illness, or know someone who's going through any of or one of these three things. So um, it's a book that I would say you should get. Wounded Survivor is available on Amazon and Barnes and Noble, but um, I would say go on Amazon.com, type in Wounded Survivor, and purchase a copy. Um, I think right now it's saying that it's it's um, temporarily out of stock, but the book is printed on demand. So um, that part of it is, is some glitch that we're trying to figure out how to fix. But um, go ahead on Amazon.com, purchase the book, and read it, and share with your friends and family. and. Um, like I said, you know, you can contact me on woundedsurvivor.com, um, woundedsurvivor at hotmail.com, and I'm on also on Instagram, underscore, woundedsurvivor, underscore, and I'm also on Twitter at Arthur Janelle. So there are many ways to contact me. So i um, looking forward to hearing from you. And, um, that's about it. <laughs> and I'm sure a lot of people are going to be reaching out because, again, my 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 feedback on it pretty much is that the, the content is is heart. It touches the heart. Um, you know, you, you, you never want to, whether it's your family member, your friend, a stranger in the night, you know, know of anyone that goes through the struggle and the trauma that you've you've endured. But it's more melancholy than it is sadness. You know what I mean? It's not yeah. a sad book by any means. And I think it's important for not just people who are going through, who will go through, who have gone through, but I think more importantly, 
everybody else. And the reason why, you know, we always talk about the fact that if somebody does something, right? What if we could rewind the hands of time and get to that person before they became that person? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So a lot of time, I think just, 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 just buy it, bring it in a household, have your kids read it, your sons especially read it, because a lot of times they're not necessarily aware and nobody has talked to them, has mm -hmm. taught them at all about the hurt that they can inflict. Oh yeah. So I think it's important for, for, for those people, just regular people to just read the book because here's the deal. There's a lot more in here for those people who have not been hurt, who have not been wounded than those people who have. Yeah. You know, so they're going to go ahead and check it out. I'm going to keep talking about it because, again, I, I think it's just a, overall a dope book, Janelle. And, and let me just say again. Thank you on behalf of all the everybody listening in from near and far right now, all the people on YouTube, all the people on Facebook, everywhere. Thank you so much for taking your time to hang out with us, oh, and um, I'm bringing a book to life for us. And it's like it's like it's like you are now the you're the animated version. You are you're the audible. You know what I mean? So <laughs> so thank you. It was, it, was so, it was a pleasure. Thank you so much. My pleasure. And before I want you to do one thing, drop the info one more time as to where they can get the book, um, your sure. website and so forth. Sure. So it's on amazon.com. If you type in wounded survivor, um, it, it pulls up that same green book with the heart on it. So, um, it's on, uh, it's also on Barnes and Noble as well. You can purchase it there. And you can contact me at wounded survivor at hotmail.com. Um, you can also contact me on Instagram at underscore wounded survivor underscore Twitter at Arthur Janelle. Or when all else fails, Google. You know what I mean? Google works Google. all the time. Yep, I tell you. <laughs> Google my name, but the book will come up. So it'll come up. Yeah, it will come up. Oh man. Thanks again so much. Thank um you. thank you so much. Wishing you a fantastic weekend. Like I said, it's Thursday. Uh, it's I'll take the Thursday Thursday. over Monday any day. So. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're in town, make sure you look me up. All right. Make sure you link me. All right. I will. All right. Thanks so much take again. Care. You I, too. All right, take care. All right. Bye-bye. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Janelle Reynolds. And again, make sure you get that book.